Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legend. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are going to finish up our uh, guide to the commanders and uh, we're going to do so with the UK. So uh, let's let's look at the good old British commanders here. Starting with Andrew Cunningham. Now Andrew Cunningham was the first one that was unlocked for me for the British so that generally means that he's going to be one of those every every ship kind of players so uh, let's see what we got first of all increase the main battery precision of your battleship okay that's always gonna be a good thing right so uh, then his first tier we got not one, not the one for nuisance so risk of flooding and risk of catching fire is reduced for those of you who don't like to get caught on fire in your battleships uh, then flammable cannoneer for the opposite of that, which is for me, <laughs> uh, plus 4%, well, on uh, mastery stage two, plus 4%, uh, to the main guns, uh, uh, range and plus 2% to the precision of the main guns, but we get that 10% risk of catching fire. So, uh, definitely something to keep in mind if you're going to be going this route. Now, something that somebody asked me in the last video was uh, what does it mean the masteries you see mastery two of three and all that stuff so I'll go over that real quick I thought I've done this before but I'll just do it again to touch up uh, to make sure everybody's on the same page so the masteries that you see here uh, when you look at them if you've not upgraded your commander at all say he's a, he's a rank one okay well first of all rank one you can only pick the first tier I believe right Okay, so as you rank up using your commander's XP, which is the blue star up there, and I've heard somebody talk about using global XP as well, um, and I haven't had to do that yet, so I can't uh, confirm or deny it, but I've heard that it's a thing. So if that's a possible thing, I would imagine if you're completely out of commander XP, then you could use your global XP kind of like you do to boost a ship to the next upgrader or whatever. You would just press uh, boost to uh, the next level if you have enough of course uh, now the only thing that you've got to watch in that regard is the promotion ranks okay so once you get to tier 7 you have to pay I think the first first promotion uh, points that you spend are uh, is like five okay it costs like five promotion uh, rewards or whatever to rank up to tier 7 plus the commander XP that it costs to get to tier 7 and from there it goes up to 8, 20, 38, 63, and from 11 on, or no, wait, there it is. So once you get to 14, it starts costing insignias as well, which are rare. So you want to use those wisely for the best commanders for the, the nations that you use the most. And uh, I will, I'm going to have to be right back. I apologize, guys. Uh, nature calls. And we're back. Hello. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, not going to lie, it kind of snuck up on me. But I'm back. So uh, where were we? Uh, we were talking about ranking up and the masteries of the different skills and so on and so forth. So uh, there's a couple different ways. Uh, the first one for these main skills that are all over here is just by ranking up your commander. The higher the, the level, the better your bonuses are. Um, most of them only have three tiers. Uh, so you start out at like three, then you go to five, and then you'll go to seven or eight, most likely somewhere in there, um, to finish on this particular skill. And so, uh, that's what the mastery is when I'm talking about that. So that, that's how you get the higher masteries for those skills. Each skill tier requires different levels to, to level up. So, uh, say we were going to go up to level eight. Well, if we look at our skills, uh... On up and an upgrade to rank eight for this commander will give us a extra two percent uh, dispersion bonus for our battleship. So it was three percent with a five percent uh, add to rudder shift time. This would give you an extra two percent, giving you a minus five percent to your dispersion. That is the masteries that I was talking about. So that's how you get that. There's nothing real special behind it, but like I said, the main thing is if you go up here. Oh, it's not going to show me. Never mind. I thought I could go up there, but you see up top where you have the 2.485 million with the blue star. That is your commander's XP. Right next to that, you have your global XP, 
Uh, then beyond that, you have I have 39 of the promotion orders. The promotion orders, like I said, are what you use to get to level 7 and beyond. You'll have to use those promotion orders plus the commander's XP to rank up. Uh, and they go up significantly each time. Uh, and then beyond level 14, when you get to level 14, you have to use your first insignia. And then it costs three insignias for 15 and eight insignias for 16, or yeah, for uh, max crew or max commander status. So uh, definitely something to keep in mind. Also, when you hit level seven on here, you unlock your first inspiration, which you can choose from any commander that you have unlocked. And that's a big thing. You have to have them unlocked. So any commander that you have, their base trait can be chosen as an inspiration for any commander. Uh, and then at rank 11, down here, you unlock the second inspiration. So you can have your base trait plus two inspirations from any commanders that you own and all of the skills for the commanders as well. So uh, now that we've got that out of the way, we'll go back to the regular video of the skills and, and all that stuff and uh, try to move it along as quickly as we can. Uh, most of this we've already seen at some point or another. I believe we had already talked about these. Uh, risk of flooding, risk of catching fire is, is less. Uh, this one gives you the range increase plus the precision increase with the increased risk of catching fire. Personally, I like having more range and more precision on my battleships. So definitely a thing for me. Um, and then gyrating drill bits gives you uh, more damage from AP shells fired from your battleship's main gun, which is always a good thing. Plus, it gives you a better rotating uh, turrets for your battleship. Uh, that being said, you do lose 7% of your maximum speed. So definitely a little bit of a trade-off there. But having more damage caused by your AP shells, probably going to be worth it in the end. Moving on, we have... The marksmanship, which is the one that uh, I always I always tell everybody about. I try to stack my uh, dispersion, my precision on my uh, battleships for this reason. Get another 3% to the dispersion and a little bit slower rudder shift time. So again, not very maneuverable, not the fastest, but man, can you put a hurting on somebody when your shots decide to hit the target, uh, which is still funny because sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, then, of course, the uh, on second thought again, so you can rank up and get bonuses to the shell switching time. Uh, I imagine it's 15, 30, probably 45 is tops. Maybe it's 40% tops. Uh, I don't know. I don't use it. So keep that in mind. And then we have our trades at the bottom. We have torpedo visibility range. But you lose a repair party. I don't know why I have this one chosen, to be honest. I'll be real honest. I don't know why I have this one chosen. That's a bad perk for me uh, because seeing torpedoes ahead of time is not worth losing a repair charge. So uh, I'm definitely changing that right here, right now. Uh, damage control party reload time uh, is decreased, but the duration is decreased. And then a the main battery range is increased. Oh, so they really don't have much in this, this uh, whole thing here. So that could be why. Um... Do I want the extra range, probably, or the damage control party reload time? You know, on battleships, that's going to be significant, so I guess I'll go with that. So, there you have it. Andrew Cunningham, first commander here for the British. Moving on to William Tennant, not to be confused with David Tennant, who is my favorite Doctor Who. <laughs> there you go. See, I'm not completely useless. I have facts in my head. Sometimes. <laughs> You don't want to know what's going on in there most of the time. But anyway, his sta his base trait is reduced incoming damage to your cit citadel, which is huge. So uh, somebody citadels you, you take less damage from it. In this case, 3% less damage. And uh, it's a base trait, so it ranks up with each level until you max it out. So it looks like it's going to go up uh, half a percent each time. We're on Mastery 6 right now. Because he's a level 6. So uh, definitely something to consider. But let's look at his skills. Burn it down XXL. 140 millimeters and above. Risk of catching fire. Much, well, a little better. Anyway. So uh, we've seen that one before on the other cruiser captains. Then we have the Ingenious, which we've also seen. 
where you uh, reduce the incoming splash damage and uh, increase the traverse speed of your cruiser's guns. And it enables the warning indicator showing the number of people looking at you. Moving on, we have increased torpedoes visibility range by 3% stock. So that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, increases the maximum speed of your cruiser and enhanced rudder shift speed. So you go faster and you turn faster. It's a pretty good combo. Especially for cruisers. Reduce the incoming fire... Or reduce incoming damage to your cruiser increase resilience of her weaponry and reduce the module repair time we've already seen this one in the last video but basically your uh, guns get more hp so they're harder to knock out they spend less time being knocked out and you get an overall reduced uh damage if people are shooting at you and you're in a cruiser so two percent less damage taken while you're in a cruiser. Pretty good perk. Uh, then we have Velocious, which is the maximum movement speed. And then we have incoming damage for cruisers by itself. So, that's the one thing I don't understand. So this gives you an incoming damage for cruisers base of minus two. And this gives you minus two. And then it goes up to four. And this goes up to three. Okay, so it starts to pull away from the uh, incoming damage a little bit as you upgrade uh, your mastery. So, okay, that's where I could see this being a little bit better. But still, you get more for your perk. So this would make more sense for me. And then, of course, I'm always going to say it. Having the extra sonar, definitely a plus. But let's look at the other. Steer clear, improves ship steering, and reduce the repair time for the steering and reduce damage control party consumable reload time and increase its duration not a bad perk but again sonar can't have enough of it <laughs> especially with all the freaking torpedoes everybody's launching everywhere when you've got five destroyers in a match moving on john jellico that's a weird name jellico anyway First things first, increase duration of the repair party consumable. Okay. Not bad. So it's obviously a battleship captain. Except it has torpedoes. <laughs> increase the travel speed of your torpedoes. Then we have increase ramming damage dealt and reduce ramming damage taken. And increase the chance of HE shells above 140 millimeters causing a fire. So... I'm not sure why the torpedo skills are here. Um, obviously, this is supposed to be more of a general purpose. Uh, but, no, see, yeah, that this could be a, a British... I'm forgetting, it's the British. The British cruisers have the ability to repair health. So that would make more sense. Um, if you're in a British cruiser like the Danae, you can actually repair your health. Uh, you don't get any HE, you only get AP. But you get to uh, repair your health. You get uh, sonar and everything. It's it's good. It really is. Actually, I don't remember if you do get sonar in the today. Somebody will have to let me know in the comments below. Or I'll just not be lazy and go check. But I'm going to be lazy. Uh, so we already talked about these. Next skill is going to be look at me now. So increase the ship concealment rating. Then we've got increase the main battery traverse speed. And increase torpedo visibility range. I'm definitely going to have to go with the traverse speed on this one because this one, while it's okay, isn't yeah, And then this one is meh. So f getting your turrets on target faster, definitely going to be a plus. Uh, then moving on, we've got back in stock. So reduce the torpedo tubes reload time. Then we've got reduced shell switching time if they're all loaded. And we have increased the maximum speed of the ship. So out of all of these this or this probably going to go with this one if it was me personally um just because honestly do i need one percent more movement speed or do i need to see torpedoes from two percent further it's not really that big of a change so being able to switch your shell types quickly can be a lifesaver especially against destroyers so moving on, we've got Smoke on the Water. Again, greatest like perk sound or perk name ever. I like it. Um, 
surprised it isn't deep purple. It's green, red. Okay, too much. I got it. I, yep. Some of you got the reference. Other of you, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Increase the smoke screen deployment time as well as its duration. So you get uh, longer of putting out your smoke and your smoke stays out longer. Which is interesting in a British ship because British ships have really short smoke duration. So that's a thing to consider. Increase the maximum range of the main battery is always a good thing. Being able to shoot people at further away, right? And then improve the ship steering as well as reduce steering gear repair time. So in this case, I would probably take either this because it is a British ship. So if you do have smoke, then uh, using the extra duration might come in handy because those are really short-lived smoke screens. But you also get the, the addition to main battery range, which is always going to be a good thing as well. So there you have it. John Jellico. Little bit of everything, but more centered towards battleships and cruisers. Philip Vane or Vian Vine. We'll just go with it. Uh, his is increase the dispersion of incoming shells. It's like having premium camo all the time. Not quite as good at only 0.2%, but that's going to be 0.2% every single level that you level them up. So maxed out in theory. That would be 0.2 times 16, which would be 3.2%. Somebody will have to let me know. I, if my math is wrong, I could be. I'm not going to say I'm a mathematician, but it seems to be about right. 3.2%, which is slightly less than if you bought premium camo. All right, contact is imminent, so increases the travel speed of your torpedoes. And quick fix increases module defense against high explosive damage steering gear and engine modules remain functional after sustaining critical damage ooh ooh me likey that how many times you've been in your destroyer get your engine knocked out right after you just blew your uh, repair kit you would still be able to move and turn so uh definitely something to consider and out of the two i normally go for the torpedo speed but i think i would definitely choose this because that is huge that is really huge so not only do you take less module damage from he to begin with which if you're in a in a uh, destroyer that would help quite a bit but you get the the functional steering and engine after they've already been hit critically so where you would be stopped you're still moving that's huge that's life-saving so definitely would pick that one. Uh, look at me now. Increase the ship concealment and increase maximum speed of your destroyer at the cost of reduced rudder shift. So we get a pretty decent uh, plus two percent, but we lose five percent of the rudder. But on a destroyer, you're not really going to notice because it moves so fast anyway. So my thing is, you got to keep in mind that this would upgrade two more times. So that would probably end up with a 6% increase uh, to your overall destroyer speed, but you don't increase the rudder shift time any further than the 5%. So eventually you would have a 6% bonus to your speed and only a 5% uh, nerf to your, your rudder shift. It's a pretty good trade. So what do we end up with next? We got Rudus. Reduce torpedo tubes reload time by 2%. We've got improve your destroyer's main battery accuracy and precision while lowering the ship's maximum HP. Or reduce all armaments reload time as ship sustains damage. Ooh. All right, so this is kind of like a, an adrenaline rush, except each time that you take damage, you end up getting a slight buff to your ship. So, while I would like that, and I would like that, that's interesting, and I would probably at least test it out. I get shot a lot. There's no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, in my destroyers, I'm taking a lot of damage. Having this ability is kind of nice. Uh, so, let me know if anybody's got this, and if they like it or not. Next, we have smoke on the water again, which is the duration and dispersion of your... Uh, smoke screens then we've got incoming fire dispersion 
range of destroyers being gun increased, but a huge nerf to your rudder. So you get 10% added to your rudder time, but you reduce the, uh, or you, yeah, you reduce the dispersion of the people that are shooting at you, or increase it, sorry, you increase it, making it less likely that the shells hit you, and you increase your main battery's guns on your destroyer, which for the British, they have pretty good guns, not quite up to par with the American guns, but they're a nice in-between. And then, of course, rather be torching. So increase the chance of causing fire with your destroyer's HE shells while reducing their impact damage. So we had something similar yesterday, I believe. Uh, it, it's basically the same thing. So you don't do as much overall damage per shot, but you get a more chance of setting a fire. So that would be up to you. Um, you get a 1% chance of fire per per upgrade so that would end up being a three percent chance of fire and a seven percent reduction in damage caused by he so uh a bit of a trade i would probably end up going for this one to be honest or smoke but most likely this one moving on we've got reginald tierwit and he has true grit Reduce the chance of sustaining steering gear critical damage and decreasing torpedo tubes reload time. So right there off the bat, you sound like you're a destroyer captain. Potentially cruiser, but probably destroyer. So what do we got? We've got torpedo speed plus two knots, which is kind of nice. And then we go from there, we've got... Okay, so it's actually, that's mastery two, so that's actually one knot, then two knots, and then three knots would be fully upgraded. Uh, subsurface venture reduce torpedo tubes reload time and increase torpedo travel speed but it increases your destroyer main battery reload time that's a pretty good uh, trade for me so you get both a re reload time buff and a speed buff on your torpedoes and all you have to pay for it is a little bit longer reload on your main batteries seems fair so moving on we've got increased ship concealment or Reduce detectability range of your destroyer, specifically destroyer, at the cost of decreased maximum HP. So again, so this gives you a 2% sea detectability range. Uh, and then it would give you 3 and then a probably 4 for the max. This gives you 2.5%, so it's slightly better, but you lose hit points in the process. And then it doubles to 5%. So yeah, this would definitely be the better concealment for a uh, destroyer in particular. And this cr this commander seems to be pretty good for a destroyer. So we've got reduced re uh, torpedo reload. We've got increased torpedo range while reducing main battery range. So now you're extending the range of your torpedoes. But you're reducing the range of your main batteries. Not a bad trade. Not a bad trade because your torpedoes are always going to be able to do more damage uh, to a target than your guns. So being able to reach out and touch somebody, preferably while stealthed, which is difficult in, uh, well, early on in the British tree and the American trees. And then, of course, we've got reduce all armaments reload time as ship sustains damage. Again, this is the second time we've seen that. So uh, definitely something to consider. That would be be pretty good that would actually be really good so yeah that would that would give you a re reload time reduction of 0 0.05 which will end up being what it'd be 0.15 then on the final final mastery it'd be 0.15 so 0.15 percent reload time reduction for every one percent lost now can you imagine if you were sitting on one percent of your health which does happen in a destroyer if you manage to slip away right after getting obliterated say you have a 99 yeah we'll just say you have a 99 percent uh hp lost now you multiply that by 0.15 and that's what you've got for a reload time buff that's significant um in, in practice, is it going to be better than having the extra range on your torpedoes? I don't know. I would probably still choose the range just because this only like requires you to get shot. Not a, not a big fan of getting shot if I don't have to be. 
Uh, then we've got smoke on the water again. We know what that is. The dispersion time and duration of your smoke screens. Maximum destroyer speed, but the precision of your guns are less. Or you can get more engine boost duration, a reduced engine boost reload time, and an extra engine boost. So that's probably where I would go with this. So yes, you get an increase to your uh, destroyer speed here, but you get an increase to your destroyer speed here with the engine boost. It lasts longer, reloads faster, and you get an extra one. So I would definitely choose this personally. All right, and moving on to Bruce Frazier. We have increased the maximum speed of the ship. That is really, like, not telling us anything. Increases the chance of HE shells of uh, 140 and above causing a fire. So we're looking at cruisers and battleships. And increase the main battery uh, range of your cruiser. So now we're looking specifically at cruisers. So let's see what we got. Increase torpedoes visibility range or increase the chance of causing fire with your cruiser's main or secondary battery. Okay, so this is one of those guys. All right, so you can stack this and this, and he's probably got at least one more, if I had to guess, of causing fire. So uh, we'll, we'll see where we go from here. Increase the maximum speed of the ship or increase the armor piercing capability and maximum damage of your cruiser's AP shells. That's always a good thing. Uh, decrease incoming damage to your ship only works with cruisers. So as long as you're in a cruiser, you will take reduced damage from everything that shoots you. It's never a bad thing. But being able to deal more damage with your shots using AP, definitely going to be a plus. I prefer offensive to defensive. You know what I mean? Uh, what do we say? Yep, we already talked about that one. Moving on, we've got the uh, improved ship steering as well as reduced steering gear repair time again. We've got fixated, which increases the precision and accuracy of your main batteries on your cruiser. So that's a good thing. Or reduce the reload time of your main batteries. So here we get a bonus to precision and a bonus to your dispersion. And here we just get a re reload time buff. So I would probably choose this. Again, getting it, getting more shells on target will beat the reload more often than not. <laughs> so moving on to Charles Madden. What do we got? Decre his base trait decreased the reload time and increased traverse speed for the main battery. Okay. And then we've got reduce the risk of catching fire or flooding. This sounds like a battleship tanky class. What do you guys think? Increase the torpedo detection capability and reduce the reload time of your battleship's main battery at the cost of lowering its maximum range. So you can see torpedoes further away, you reload faster, but you can't uh, shoot as far. So again, kind of going with the tanky feeling, right? So increase the main battery traverse speed or increase the secondary battery range precision and accuracy. Now, I'm, I'm like tempted one of these days to try this secondary battery builds because I have a lot of times where cruiser, or cruisers and, and uh, destroyers get really, really close to you and I just want to see those secondaries just obliterate them with high explosive. It'd be fantastic. So one of these days I'm going to have to put that challenge out there and see what I can do with secondary batteries in a match. Uh keep an eye on that let me know in the comments below if you want to see something like that a little video challenge video what's the maximum damage i can do with only the secondary batteries <laughs> that'd be a kind of a boring match to watch probably but you'd, it'd be funny watching me try to like sneak up on people in a battleship <laughs> reduce the shell switching time of all if all main battery guns are loaded okay and Decrease the chance of your ship catching fire and reduce the maximum number of fires to three. At the same time, reduce the reload time of damage control party and its duration. So it doesn't last as long, but you're reducing your risk of catching fire by 3% and your damage control party reload time by 3%. So definitely a nice thing. Plus, you're limiting the amount of fires that can happen on your ship to just three. So again, of course, if you're on fire three times, you're still having a bad day. Usually, I try to uh, fix that at two. I have been on fire three times, and it's not pleasant. Your health goes away very quickly. <laughs> increase the maximum range of your main battery, or increase the amount of HP restored by the repair consumable, and you get an extra charge. 
or you get a better uh, rudder shift speed or traverse speed of the battleships guns yeah okay so you get less accurate shooting your guns turn faster your rudder turns faster but you lose the accuracy I'm not sure that's worth it I would probably go for this being able to get some more health back is definitely a plus so uh, Charles Madden definitely a battleship captain so we've made it through the British commanders again I'm trying to get these videos out for you guys uh, these aren't necessarily the most intuitive videos I know that but there's a lot of people asking for these sort of commander videos and I want to make sure that they have the ability to look it up and uh, come check out my channel in the process. So thank you guys so much for watching. In recap, we got Andrew Cunningham, who is a battleship captain. We have William Tennant, who is a cruiser captain. We have Joe Jellico, who is also a cruiser captain. Philip, I'm not even going to say it, but Philip we have is a uh, destroyer captain with the very interesting perk that I was talking about with the whole maintaining the ability to move even though you've suffered critical damage to your, your engine and steering. That's, that's fantastic. I would love to see that in action. Might have to do that. Reginald Tierwit. Uh, he is our, uh, what, our destroyer captain, right? Yep, definitely looking like it. Yep, he is the destroyer captain. Bruce Fraser is going to be the uh, cruiser burn it down captain. That's what I'm going to call him. So you stack your burning and armor piercing damage. So he is your DPS captain for your cruiser. And then Charles Madden, the battleship captain that we just finished talking about, who is the tank build battleship so, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have found this useful. Hopefully I've been able to explain it good enough and uh, you guys have been able to enjoy it. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.